Hello. Um, thank you all for coming tonight. Um, it was a pleasure um, chatting with some of you and seeing what you all are doing. Um, personally, I think community media is very important, and um, I'm glad you all have you know cool productions that you do here at Fair Fresh Public Access. So my job is to introduce the guests you're about to hear tonight. So let me get on with it. Uh, first up is John Wetmore. John has been an independent television producer since the 1990s and has been advocating for sidewalks since the 80s. In 1996, he combined the two and started his public access television show, Pearls for Pedestrians. Pearls for, for Pedestrians appears on 150 public access channels across the United States, and his YouTube channel has 1,500 subscribers and over half a million views. With over 267 episodes, he has done interviews in all 50 states and 21 countries. Mr. Wetmore is a member of the Maryland Bicycle and Pedestrian Advisory Committee and has participated in pedestrian advocacy at local, state, and national levels. Please welcome John Wetmore, who will be discussing how he distributes his television show to public access channels across the country. Thank you. So the, when you have a program you've created here at Fairfax Public Access and you want to distribute it elsewhere, the first thing to consider is um, who would be interested in the program? You know, if you're looking at uh, Fairfax High School football, well, the audience might not really go outside the county boundary. Uh, if you're looking at local restaurant reviews, well, maybe anyone in the metro area might be interested in it. And so you could think of going to some of the other uh, local access stations. If you have a, you know, a cooking program or a politics program that you know, looks beyond county politics, that might have more national interest and you can look at an even broader distribution. Um, but there are public educational and government access channels uh, in thousands of communities across the United States. And it's probably going to be the public access channels you'll be looking for. And I've, if you've got the handout that went around, uh, it lists some of the local ones. Uh, Montgomery Community Media of Montgomery County, DCTV, Prince George's Community Television, Arlington Independent Media, Fairfax Public Access right here. <clears throat> um, if you're going beyond that area, uh, the Wikipedia link gives you a, a partial list of some of the access stations around the country. Uh, unfortunately, it's not complete and not up to date. Uh, there is not currently, that I'm aware of, any complete list of access stations. So sometimes you have to do a little legwork and a little research to find out, you know, is there one in the city where you'd like to be shown? Um, the Alliance for Community Media is sort of the, the trade association for access stations around the country. And uh, they have an annual conference coming up in Portland, Oregon this summer. And they can be a resource as well to communicate with uh, access stations and, and access producers. Um, each public access station has its own set of rules. Uh, the most common one is that you have a local resident who is the so-called sponsor of your program. They want someone that lives within the city limits to fill out the paperwork and bring in the program and say, I live in town, I'd like you to show this program. Uh, another hurdle you occasionally find is they might want local content. and. Maybe the program has to be at least 50% local content. There are ways to get around that. I had uh, someone uh, sponsoring my program in a station out in Washington State that required 50% local content. Well, they took my half hour program, wrapped it inside a one hour talk show so they could look at my program and then discuss how does what I talk about fit into the concerns in their community. And so but that's a lot of work and so I'm no longer on that station because you know, they weren't able to sustain that. And then uh, the third requirement that sometimes comes up is money. Um, for someone to be a member of the station, often there's an annual fee involved, membership fee, or so occasionally even independent of the membership fee, um, an access station may require an outside program to come up with a certain amount of money to be on the air. Um, and so those are all things to, to consider. And then you, know, you got your program, you got the station that's interested in showing it, you've gone through all the hurdles, how do they get your program? And there are some that still take DVDs 
in which case you have to figure out how do you author your DVD, how do you duplicate your DVD, and then the expensive part, mailing the DVD out. Uh, DVDs are dirt cheap now. You can get them for you know, 15 cents a piece or something up at Micro Center when you get them in bulk. Uh, postage will run you 10 times that. So, um, but the majority of stations I'm on now uh, get, get things electronically over the internet. And I've got a few examples of websites that I use for that. Uh, the first one is called PEG Media for Public Educational Government Media. Uh, it's free to set up an account. It's very easy. And then you can upload your program to your page on the account for your program. And then uh, to download the program, there's a certain fee depending upon the bandwidth required. Uh, for a half hour program, it might run 50 cents. Uh, they cap the amount that you might have to pay as 99 cents if you have an hour program. Um, and you can either choose that to pay that yourself as the producer, because 50 cents is less than what it would cost to mail them a DVD. Um, or you can say, you know, I don't have a budget, uh, you know, I can't afford that. We'll let stations, the stations pay for the download fee, uh, in which case you'll reduce the number of stations that might be interested in your program, because not everybody is lined up where they are allowed to pay for programming, and some places interpret the 50 cents as paying for programming, not you're just paying for the bandwidth. So, um, uh, so when you're working on your program budget and your program planning, uh, come up with a little pot of money to, to pay for the 50 cents yourself because that gives you a wider, wider choice of stations. Um, but the station still needs to get interested in your program, so you still need to let them know about it. They'll still need to go through whatever process they require for a local sponsor or, or the equivalent. Um, the next website is the Telview Connect Media Exchange. Um, Telview is a company that designs the servers that a lot of access stations use in their cable cast. Um, and uh, Media Exchange has the advantage that uh, it's designed to communicate very well with the servers in the cable cast rooms. Um, I've been a member of the Media Exchange for so long that I am not familiar with their current setup. Uh, you go to this website and you can go through the process and then have to contact them and find out what's involved in setting up a personal account and loading up your shows, are there fees involved, and so on and so forth. Uh, third website here is the uh, Internet Archive. They have a section of the Internet Archive that's set up as the Community Media Archive. Um, a lot of access stations are getting their programs on there now. Uh, now, the, the two others, Peg Media and Telview Connect, they have very good analytics. You can find out what stations have downloaded your program, which episodes they've downloaded. Uh, you can get a lot of information. Uh, the Community Media Archive um, at the Internet Archive, if that information is on there, I haven't found it yet. Uh, their analytics aren't quite as good. So um, I can't tell you how many of my stations get my program over the Community Media Archive because the analytics just aren't there, or at least they don't think they're there. If anyone does discover that they're there, let me know, because it would be good to know. Um, so those are you know, some of the ways you can get your program out there. Uh, but there are you know, two halves of, the, of, the, of it. One is getting the program to them electronically or by physical media DVD. But the more time-consuming part, and that is finding a local person who's the volunteer to sponsor you there and, and get, the, get the station to carry your program. Um, and then you have the entirely separate universe, which is video sharing sites. Uh, YouTube's the big one. Vimeo is popular with a lot of people. Uh, back in 2005, when they were sprouting up like mushrooms, there were dozens and dozens of them. Most of them have gone by the wayside. Um, but uh, you know, like most people, I am on, uh, I am on YouTube. And I consider this as a separate audience from uh, being on a PEG channel. You know, because when you're on the PEG channel, you're going to get, uh, there'll be some people that are looking for your program. They know you're on at Tuesdays at 10 p.m. and they'll look for you. But you also get a lot of people who are on just, uh, you know, they're watching the high school football game 
and they didn't click away fast enough and your program was on next. And so you get some of those, those accidental viewers, um, which is a little bit different from a place like YouTube, where if someone's watching you on YouTube, they're watching my program, YouTube figured out they're either looking for the pedestrians or they know what else you've looked at, so they know you're interested in pedestrians. Um, and so I'm going to get a different section of the audience than I would on FBA, where it might be a little broader, because you get a lot more accidental viewers, channel surfers that way. Um, and a couple things when you're, when you're on a place like YouTube, you want to have sort of an identity for your program. So in my case, I have the, um, you know, the, the crosswalk, uh, the color of the font, and so on. And you know, it shows up again. Some of you may have picked up one of my postcards, which um, you know, helps promote my program. I've got you know, sort of the graphic that identifies it, uh, you know, the title, the links to it, the, my slogan, you know, TV talk for people who walk. Uh, these were really cheap, so I didn't take advantage of the backside. But you could also have printing on the backside, which would make it a much more useful uh, to give people more information. Um, you know, I have you have a, a welcome video there. Uh, you want to keep that short, under a minute. That's telling people what your program is all about, why they should watch it, what they're going to see if they watch it. Uh, and then in the case of my channel, I have a lot of different things mixed on here. Uh, you know, two thirds, three fourths of my videos are my pedestrian videos, but I've got everything else from um, you know, eclipses to uh, building fires, railroads, building demolitions, which are my most popular videos. And so I try to keep them organized in playlists so that when you get on my channel, you can find the playlist that has the stuff that you're interested in. Uh, the more you can do to make it convenient for people to find what they're after on your YouTube channel, the more likely you're going to stay around and watch more videos. So on each of my programs, um, yeah, they have something called an end screen. You get to the end of the video. I can, you can put an end screen on there. They click on it. They go to directly to a playlist of related videos that you have. Um, we'll click here on you know, my latest video. And uh, un unfortunately, um, well, fortunately, um, you've got, uh, they run ads, so I get to get some revenue from it. But uh, we're going to skip the trial there. But the uh, couple things here, you have an opportunity to describe your video right underneath the video there. And I have the time code where each of the interviews on, on that episode begin. So if you're only interested in the third interview about road diets, you can click on the time code and go straight to that interview. And once your viewers realize, I don't need to shuffle back and forth trying to find where I'm at. I can click and go straight to it. You know, your channel's friendlier to use, easier to use. Maybe they'll watch more of your videos. And so anything, uh, anything you can do to make it just a little, a little more friendly for, for your viewers will keep them around. And this is sort of a, a typical program. Uh, I shoot on a real budget. This is a lockdown two shot where I'm interviewing the person on location where we're discussing you know, the road diet and the crosswalks on the street behind her. Um, you know, if I had the budget, it'd be nice to have multiple cameras and have close-ups and so on. Uh, one of the things that I decided in 96 when I was in pre-production was, what can I do to do the program cheaply and quickly and, uh, and, you know, and get it done on a monthly basis when I have other things I need to do in my life? And so that was one of the decisions to make was, well, it's going to be a lockdown two-shot with a handheld mic and, and so on. So uh, my contact information is there on the bottom. Uh, I ran through a lot, but uh, if people have questions, I'd be glad to answer them and, uh, before we get to the next speaker.